Okay, guys, I hope you know podcasts are growing in popularity and the trend is going to stay for a long time. And if it is not part of your content and traffic strategy, I think it is time to look at it if you have the resources before it gets saturated. You can take this as a piece of advice or you can leave it. It's totally up to you, but just do a little research and you will get what I mean. But what I'm going to share with you today is if you own a WordPress website and you're still paying for podcast hosting on sites like Buzzsprout, Podbean, Libsyn, etc., you can now do it with RankMath Pro. It saves you money, it gives you the RSS feed URL to be discovered on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, Teacher, etc. It makes your episode pages schema ready, it allows you to display your podcast episode data on any pages you want on your site, and generally, it allows you to start a complete podcast website on WordPress. I'm excited to show you how it works. Let's go! Hey, it's Jack from RankMath and today we are going way beyond being just an SEO plugin. We're going to give you tools you need if you decide to host your podcast files on your WordPress website. And even if you're hosting your podcast somewhere else, you can still utilize RankMath to manage your episodes on your website. If you are already using RankMath Pro, you can remove other third-party podcast plugins and yes, this feature is for pro users. So if you are on the free version of RankMath, you will see the podcast episode schema in your schema generator. But if you want to use it, you need the pro version. Honestly, RankMath Pro gives you so much more than just SEO and podcast features. We have covered so many features on this channel already, but if you are interested in justifying the free and pro version, feel free to check out this link. Okay, enough with the promos. The key to getting featured on Google Podcasts, such as the Rich Snippets, as I Google the keyword, Zero Waste Podcast, or to have a podcast listing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever to expand the reach, is to have an RSS feed URL. You don't need to upload your podcast MP3 files to different directories. I'm sure you know that. So to get this RSS feed URL from RankMath, all you need to do is to install RankMath Pro on your site, head over to RankMath's dashboard, and there, you will see the podcast module. To use this podcast module, the prerequisite is you need to keep this schema module toggled on. Now, as you turn on the podcast module, you can either access the settings here or under the general settings, you will see the podcast options here. This is the RSS feed URL as I've mentioned. And this is the link you need to submit to different podcasting directories such as Spotify, so that if somebody searches for a keyword on Spotify, for example, your podcast show and episodes will be found there. And the benefit for using RankMath Pro is that we will automatically submit your RSS feed to Google Podcasts. So there is no need to manually create an account on the Google Podcast Manager. So don't be surprised if your podcast is featured on one of these rich snippets without you doing anything. And the best part, if you have uploaded a new episode on your site, the podcast directories that have your RSS feed URL will get notified of your new episodes. As long as you have submitted the RSS feed URL to them, there is no need for you to manually notify them whenever a new episode is published. I'll show you how it works in a while. Now let's talk about configuring the podcast settings on your website so that you can get the maximum reach. Now, by default, your podcast name will follow your site name. But if you have a different name for your podcast, you can add it here. For example, our site name is RankMath, but the name of our podcast show is The SEO Experiment. We want to add it here. As for the description, it is good to write up on what your podcast show is about. Then the owner's name, this could be you or your company. For us, we will put it as RankMath. And for the owner's email, this is important because if you want to claim your podcast channel on the Google Podcast Manager, they will verify you based on the owner's email you have entered here. So it is better to have one email address to manage all your podcasts on different directories. And then the podcast category. Select one that best represents your podcast show or channel. If you can't find one that matches, then you can select none. For our case, we will select technology or maybe business. Now let's upload an image for your podcast show. Search engines prefer squared image for podcasts. As you can see on Google, all the images from the rich snippets are in squares. So you want to add that here. Next, 
If you have engaged third-party tracking services for your podcast, for example, Chartable, PodSites, PodTracks, etc., you can add your tracking prefix here. If your podcast episodes have explicit language or your content is not suitable for children, for example, a comedy channel that uses a lot of vulgarities, you want to toggle this on so that podcast directories will know that your content is not for children. Anyway, add your copyright tags, save changes, and now your podcast show or channel is ready. All it needs are episodes. Now, creating episodes is just like creating a new post on WordPress, unless you have created a custom post type, but in general, it should be the same. Let's add a new post. The title of your podcast episode is very important as it should achieve three things. Number one is, it should give your audience an idea what your podcast episode is about. Number two, it should entice your audience to click through. And number three, it should allow your podcast to be searchable through keywords. And the most common question is, should you include the episode number in the title? And the answer is no. It should be in the description which we'll talk about in a while. So for example, if you had an interview with Banu, you don't want to title your episode as Interview with Banu. Some of your audience may not know who Banu is. So instead, if you title it 10 Easily Applicable Online Marketing Tips from the co-founder and CMO of RankMath, would have been a much better title as it achieved the three things we have mentioned. Our podcast episode will probably be shown if somebody searched for the keyword online marketing tips. Next, to add information about your podcast, you'll want to go to the Rank Maths tab on the top right, select the schema option. We can keep the default article schema. If you intend to transcribe your podcast into a blog post, but the podcast schema is in the schema generator, right here where it says podcast episode. Click on it, and here's where you will add your episode information. Let's start with the episode name. This will be the title of your podcast episode that will appear across all podcast directories. By default, it will follow the title we have created earlier, but if you have a different episode name in mind, you can customize it here. For our case, we'll leave it as it is because the title we have created is good. The episode description is as important as the title as it further describes what the episode is about. You can add in other important keywords if they are missing from the title, but never make the mistake of keyword stuffing. The purpose of the podcast description is to describe the episode in more detail, so let's just leave it at that. We'll start with the episode number here, and here's what the episode is about. So again, it depends on what keywords you want your episodes to be found. Then, this is the short code we'll be using in a while. I'll show you how it works. This is the author name. For example, if you are the podcast host, you want to add your name here. But by default, it will be the name of the person who have created this post. For the episode duration, it follows this ISO 8601 standard. And if you don't know what this is, don't worry. Click on this link. Let's say that our episode is 38 minutes and 3 seconds long. And as you can see, the time difference between these two are 1 hour apart. So if we change the time number 2 to 38 minutes, but before that, let's make this even for easy reference. If we add 38 minutes and 3 seconds to time number 2, you will see the ISO time code as this. Copy this code and paste it back on rank math. Next, the episode URL. By default, the URL of this post you are creating will be the post URL. But in case you are hosting your podcast episode somewhere else, you can add the episode link here. For our case, we'll leave it. For the image URL, if you leave this empty, the podcast channel image will be used. But if you have uploaded an image to your site, you will have an image URL. So copy that and paste the link here. If your episode has explicit content or not meant for children, you will turn this off. But if it is family friendly, you'll keep this on so that podcast directories will show your episodes to the right audience. Now for the audio file URL, notice that there is this red asterisk here. It means that this field is mandatory for this podcast schema to work. All other fields without the asterisk are optional. The author name is required. Let's go back to the audio file URL. We have uploaded a podcast episode to our WordPress site. Let's copy the URL and paste it here. You have to make sure that this link 
ends with an appropriate file extension, such as .mp3, .wav, etc. Again, if you have hosted your podcast somewhere else, you can add the audio file URL here. It doesn't restrict you to having a link directly from your website. Next, the season number. If you'd like to group your episodes into seasons, you can do so here. Otherwise, you can leave this blank. But just for the sake of demonstration, let's say that we will have two seasons with three episodes in each. And this episode we are working on is for season one. So I'll add one here. The season name, I'll put it as the business adventures. For the season URL, I'll explain what this is and how it works in a while. But for the sake of this video, I've created a separate page for each season. And this is the URL for season one. The episode number, as we have mentioned, this is episode one. Now, before we save the episode information, let us copy the short code and hit save for this post. And now all your episode information is safe. Let's talk about how to display the episode information on this page or any other pages. Now on the editor of this episode, remember we have copied the short code. Let's paste the short code here. If we publish this episode and view the page, we will see all the cool podcast information about the episode. Now this short code works best with page builders. But if you're on the default WordPress Gutenberg editor, like what we are working on right now, you don't need the short code. All you need is to add a schema block from RankMath. And you'll see the same information here. This block will only work if you are displaying the information on the same episode page. As we update the post, this is how your episode page will look like. It is exactly the same if you have used the short code. Now, what if you want to display the episode information on other pages? For example, like I've mentioned earlier, we have created a separate page for the season. So to display this episode on the season page, we have to visit the podcast episode schema, copy the short code, visit the season page editor, and paste it here. Let me paste in the short code for the other two episodes. Update the page. And this is how the season one page looks like. It is rather simple and straightforward. All right, check this out. I've saved this earlier to let you know the difference. This is the contents of the RSS feed URL we have clicked on before we have added any episodes on the site. And now that we have published a couple of episodes, let's visit the link again. This is the before and this is the after. And as you can see, there is more information and it includes the episodes data. So all you essentially need is just to submit the RSS feed URL to all the other podcast directories and they'll get notified whenever there is a new podcast episode on your website. As long as you use our podcast episode schema, that information will be updated to the feed URL. It makes the whole process simple. First, you will create a category called podcast. And every category page will come with a link. You want to add that to your site's menu so that your episodes can easily be found on your site. We are using the default WordPress 2022 theme, so we can simply go to Appearance, select the Theme Editor, and from here, we can add the podcast menu item. Let's save this. And then, you want to set up different pages for different podcast seasons. So I'll add a new post. I will not go for pages because we can't categorize pages. So I'll add a new post. I'll name the page title as season two since we have created season one already. Then the SEO experiment. Maybe you can write a description on what season two is about. Let's select the category as podcast and you will add the short codes from the episodes that belong to season two to this page. As I've mentioned, there are six podcast episodes. Episode four, five, and six belongs to season two. So I'll visit each episode Visit the podcast episode schema, copy the short code, and paste it on the season two page. I will do the same for episode five and six. Now, every time you have a new episode, you want to add the short code to the relevant season page. As you publish this page, this is how your season page will look like, similar to season one. So if somebody lands on your website and they have clicked on the podcast menu item, they will be able to see the podcast seasons. And if they click on one of the seasons, they will see a full list of podcast episodes. 
Again, there is no hard and fast rule in displaying your podcast episodes, but this is just one method we'd like to share. Now, I will show you two methods to see if your RSS feed URL is working. The first method is to use a website called websub.rocks. Just paste your feed URL and hit subscribe. If it works, you will see there are hubs found. If not, you will see this. The second method is to use the Apple Podcast app. To verify if your feed is working, go to File, add a show by URL, paste your feed link, and hit Follow. If the RSS feed URL works, at Listen Now, you should be able to see your podcast channel. All in all, RankMath is giving you options to either integrate your existing podcast episodes to your WordPress website easily, or you can create, upload, publish, and submit your podcast episodes on directory straight from your WordPress website. An added benefit for using RankMath is that you do not need to submit your podcast to Google because we do that for you automatically. And you may be featured on the podcast reach snippet without you putting in extra effort. Word of advice. Hosting your podcast episodes on a WordPress website is one of the cheapest ways to start podcasting. But as your podcast grows and you're seeing a huge demand for bandwidth, you may consider hosting your podcast on a hosting platform of your choice. And all you need to do is to add the URL of your audio file here. Nothing changes. Your podcast website operates the same. Anyway, we hope that this podcast module will be beneficial for you. And as we have said, if you haven't created a podcast channel for your business, it's time for you to look at it. If you have any questions on the features or you have any suggestions for improvement on our podcast module, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. And once again, this is Jack from RankMath who have been constantly providing you with proper SEO knowledge. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and I'll see you in the next video.